Well, hey, Marty, how's you, how you going? I'm doing great, John. How are you doing? You look great. Oh, I was going to try to say that first. I was going to say, <laughs> you look sharp, you look clean, you look well-shaven or at least well-cut uh, down to a certain... I, what what? How long is that beard? Like, do you keep oh, it? It's, how do you do it, that? It's, do you it's use like number, a scissors. It's number three on my electric clippers. Clip oh, you use electric on. clippers. Wow, yeah. you you're okay. Wow, that's impressive. I, now, I, I I'm about, starting to choose, I'm starting to do that too. I haven't shaved in a week. Now, John, I don't know if you've noticed or not, but I I'm turning a little bit white. I don't know. Oh I'm my like, gosh! I just noticed that. <laughs> it's just like so, just so blew my year, mind. I was I was thinking maybe growing it out and, and doing this Santa Claus kind of thing, but um, yeah, you still got time. How fast does it grow? Well, I had no I'm idea not, we were going to talk not. about this. I had no idea we were going to go down we this never, whole like we never know. Weird, I mean, that's like that's what's really cool about this whole show is we never know yeah. what what usually it's like we talk about beer and like all this equipment that you know we're <laughs> we're like kind of like playing around with, but um, we have a really exciting show today, and I, I just got to get to it. So. I'm John Ferguson. That's Marty Rowe. Uh, we're here. This is the 15th episode, and uh, we're trying to do this this YouTube thing, which I had no idea how difficult this is. I was just like, just push a button, uh, and we'll give a dollar to uh, uh, this barista organization that is really helping out baristas that are kind of uh, having a rough year, uh, no doubt. Um, so anyway, uh, well, my John, goal is I to have get I have faith in our fans. I have faith in our people. I think I so have too. Faith in them that that they'll. Yeah. I I know it's difficult for them, yeah. and you'll explain the steps. But yeah. I I think they'll do it. I think I think they'll do it. And so I was only going to do uh, a thousand, or I, I was only going to do five hundred subscribers, and I was going to donate five hundred dollars. And I think that well for Coffee Tech Talk uh, crew, you know, like we're going to go in on this together. And then and then I you know our, our guest this week uh, you know they they said let's let's match it let's double it up so um, that's um, it's going to go to GoFundBean and, uh, and Barista, what Barista is Magazine. GoFundBean? Well, GoFundBean. Oh my gosh, it's it's uh, well you can go to GoFundBean.org and I I found out you can go to GoFundBean.com and okay. it'll redirect you to GoFundBean.org. And then you can kind of check out, there's like uh, uh, multiple ways. First off, you can just donate straight there. Uh, so GoFundBean is, it's, it's basically a place where you can look up your city, your state, your, your, your community and see whether or not there's a virtual tip jar. So you can just directly Venmo, give money to Breeze's in that community. Or there's yeah, a grant. It's a, yeah. it's a great cause during these times where uh, cash flow for so many people um, can be a little, little bit challenging. So yeah, and I mean, at the end of the day, like all this barista tech stuff, I mean, it doesn't matter without baristas. This, this is what it's all for. I mean, without baristas, really, none of this stuff works. Oh, I've always and, said uh, that. I couldn't do what yeah. I do if I wasn't um, provided a really cool coffee scene to do it in. And so, like, Barista Magazine obviously is the best resource for information and history and community uh, that's kind of ever really been available to uh, the coffee community. And we were so lucky, Marty, oh, uh, to, to, to have Sarah Allen on the show today. That is Sarah Allen. She's from Recent so Magazine. Glad. She started everything. I just co, I think it's a, a co-start, but like, I'll, you know, I'm not going to say anything about how that, I don't know what happened, but like, I, I know it was in like a certain year and that was the year that I got into coffee. So I got lucky also. So we're going to talk about that in just a bit. So okay. uh, GoFundBean's awesome. And they're going to be with us next week. So if you really want to learn that. more about GoFundBean, go to their website. Subscribe to Coffee Tech Talk Tuesday. Please subscribe. That's really hard to do. You have to like go to YouTube and push a subscribe button. I don't know why that's so hard. I don't, Marty, do you, you can like push a like button on Facebook well, if, all day. Well, here's, here's the only hurdle. I've never gotten more than 100 likes, I don't think. I, maybe 150. But. If you're not already signed up to Facebook and have a Facebook or a YouTube account, then oh. you've got to do that. Is it uh, Y-O-U or you? Y-O-U. Oh, Y-O-U tube, T-U-B. Uh, you tube. They're a manufacturing company. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Metal tube. Like, oh, my so gosh. And, and, the, and, the, and the tweets. What about the tweets? Should oh, we tweet on. for every tweet a dollar? Our um, Twitters, uh, for every Twitters, we should. I don't know. Okay. Well, oh, I'll, I'll, let's just donate a ton of money. But let's. let's we're gonna do to that. We're gonna do it over time, and so we're not gonna stop at eight o'clock tonight. But if you're watching the show right now, please just push that subscribe button, and we're gonna every Absolutely. every new subscriber, we're gonna give a dollar, 
and then Barista Magazine is going to match that and double it up. We're going to get a thousand, and if it if it takes more than a week, we'll just keep on talking about this we'll just, forever. Yeah, we'll hammer. And that's fine we'll with me because it. it's a great organization and it's run by great people. So, and they're going to be on with us next week. Troubleshooting with Marty. <clears throat> okay, uh, this is a, actually a it's a pretty nice machine. I like this thing. I, I just picked it up last week. Um, okay. But I've had a couple people, not this machine in particular, but uh, a lot of these single group machines in you know smaller cafes, um, are we're talking about capacity size and steam and all this stuff. So one of these questions that I get is like, well, my steam power is going out after making five or six drinks in a row. What's going on? What's wrong? Well, um, first of all, your limited capacity with 110 volts coming to it. Um, there's only so many amps. Both times amps equals watts. Watts is the work that we do. You know, I, we can get in, we can go down a huge rabbit hole on that. But look at um, that latte art. I did that on this machine. Yeah. Okay. I just had to, I just had to interrupt you on that one. That was like a first four. And and you said something about watts and 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 um, boiler capacity. So I kind of put this exactly. together too. Now, one thing I will say um, on these small machines, they actually do a pretty decent job. The ones with the E65 group heads, um, uh, and there's there's. 50 different models out there, 50 different manufacturers that make very similar units. Um, right. But they, they, they really do a pretty good job. But I will say they all have the same characteristic. If you pull any water out of that hot water spigot, and I do recommend that from time to time to keep fresh water in that boiler, yeah. but expect to have some recovery time. Because Okay, so if you, if, if, you know, it takes me an average, I mean, that's, I, I think uh, I've been doing this for a while. I think it takes me about two minutes, two and a half minutes, three minutes to make a drink, right? Is that, is that about right for you? Do you think because yeah, it takes yeah. you know, about you know, like 15 seconds to maybe grind and then a little tamping here and there, a little 30 seconds for the drone. Yeah, all, all that together, sure. About a minute and, and a half, maybe two minutes. And then now, what's you cool can is make... you, can, you, can, you can pull your shot and steam at the same time if you're talented yeah. in that. Yeah. So how many of these and can you, you do are. one at a time, like with 110 with a 4.2 liter? Boy, that's like a gallon, right? One gallon of hot water in that the, tank. You know, everyone gets hung up on the four. 0.2 liter boilers and stuff like that. That's kind of your reserve, but what really matters long-term on repetitive draws like that and repetitive steam cycles is how big is that heat element? And it is limited, but get the biggest heat element you possibly can. And that, that's what's going to carry you through multiple drinks. So 110, 110 uh volt power to a machine can only deliver so much energy to a heating element to exactly. like make, recuperate. So this is this one has a five liter boiler, so it's a little bit bigger, but it still would probably struggle after let's say five 16 ounce drinks. If they're back to back, yeah, yeah back they're, to back, they're... and then you have to wait a little bit, but then it'll recuperate and you start making more. So this is not like exactly. your, but it's a good place to start if you don't want to go straight up to. Um, yeah, that's a great. Um, that's another great unit. But that this is two twenty, and here you have like a. 11 liters, right? So, but 220 is a, a, a different beast of a- That's a whole nother world, whole nother world. Um, um, for most, unless you get a very inexpensive 220 that's got pretty small heat elements in it, you you can't make drinks fast enough to outrun a, a 220 unit. Shouldn't be able to, unless there's something wrong with it. I've never done that. Yeah, yeah they, they, it's, it's a game changer. All right, you ready for this one? We're gonna make this one fast so we can get Sarah on because we got a pop quiz, we got like trivia. I mean, we got like a whole bunch of fun stuff. I, I got a quick, I got a quick story we got about a, about we Sarah real quick. Um, but before we get to her, but let, let's go. Okay. Out. We'll go okay. What is this? The faster you get this done, the faster we can get to Sarah. Oh, that that's a that's a close up shot of a swift grinder. Oh my god! <laughs> yeah, that's right. Why did you do that to me. <laughs> Why would I do that? That's what do you mean? Is now this too easy? This is like too easy for you. Um, I just thought this was kind of cool because I was I always wanted to know what was inside of the Swift grinder because I'm just thinking like, yeah. isn't it just like that that distributor tool thing that we have now? Exactly. You know, we get it in the industry. We get into all these automation things. And when I got on into the coffee scene, this Swift grinder um, uh, made by Lamar Zoko uh, was one of the first automation that I felt actually didn't change the quality of what was ending up in the cup. Um, so if you were going to make something automated um, to make it consistent, make it easier for the barista, that wasn't a bad way to go. 
And now that now there's a puck press, right? So there's yeah. there's another there's another alternative to, you know, not having a tamper, I guess, right? Yeah, and having more consistency yeah, sure. and all that stuff. But sure. at the same time, it comes at a cost, and uh, and it, and it could be a little bit harder to calibrate if your manager's not there and, and and the coffee's not maybe kind of tasting quite right. So there's there's a little bit of a learning curve, but there's some there's some pros and cons to this. Right? Well, and and out of respect for the barista, there's definitely some artwork into it, um, and that tamping is something that is personal. A lot of a lot of the a lot of the baristas own their own tamper. It's so so personal of a process. Um, I have, so, I have, I have so a necklace, I, I a keychain. I got tampers everywhere. Yeah. So I've, even even though we, we're going automated, you know, and drive-throughs and become very automated and things like that, um, I, I feel for the old school. Um, and uh, and I think everyone should to, should learn the, the art of dosing properly. And, hey, and speaking tamper. of which, we've got Sarah on the show, Sarah Allen, and uh, ah. let's... Bring, bring you on in. Sarah, are, are we there? Dietrich, we are, we're on? I'm okay. here. Hey, oh my gosh, hey, how's it going? Hi, I'm great. How about you guys? Uh, I I'm love doing it. great. Well, uh, doing good. What's, what's your story before we get into this Barista okay. Magazine trivia? Because we're okay. doing 2005 to 2020. We know what happened in 2005. All right, but so, so what do you got? Here's, here's, here's my deal. This is full disclosure, Marty, uh, showing uh, that I, I probably could do be a better reader of Barista Magazine. So let me quickly tell you what, how I consume Barista Magazine. The first thing I do is I open it up and because I've been fortunate enough to get to know a lot of the people that might be in there, I thumb through it and I see who I might know. I'm looking for pictures or, or people's names who I personally might know. And then I, I read their articles or I gravitate on that. The next thing I do is I look for uh, new equipment, new products, new things like that. So I, I'm, I'm doing that. So um, that leaves a lot of holes. There's a lot more to Barista Magazine than those two items. So oh, yeah. sometimes- You just wait. Some, if you I, haven't been reading what's in between there, you're gonna fail I, on this one miserably. I, I have, <laughs> and, and anytime I do, I really I kick myself in the butt for not doing it more. Um, but at some time in 2017, I had this brainstorm and Sarah's gonna remember this. And I, I think I reached out maybe an email and I said, Sarah, I've got this great idea. I had just been energized by the tech guild stuff that we're doing. And uh, I said, let's do a click and clack kind of thing in your magazine where we, we have a kind of a lighthearted, fun little uh, tech thing where we answer questions and get people over humps and and uh and have fun doing it and she nicely emailed me back and she said marty we've been doing that for about a year now um <laughs> uh, jason and alex um from uh black rabbit um they're they're contributing on that and doing a great job and you should read it <laughs> Sarah, what's going on? What's what made you think of to do this? What like in 2005, you're just like, I'm bored. I want to start a Brisa magazine. Well, I totally want to answer that question. But just to go to what Marty was saying, I mean, right. it was the exact same thought, the click and clack, like Dear Abby meets car talk. Yeah. What would you call it? High, it totally high maintenance? High maintenance yeah. is what we called it. And, um, and it I mean, people have really, people, but that's exactly what you guys are doing with this show is you're answering stuff and like getting input and engaging with the community. And so we're giving yeah, it a kudos shot to you. <laughs> well, yeah. Um, so how did we decide to start Barista Magazine? Well, yeah, 2005, like I, uh, I think that I, I was working at Zoka in Seattle at the university district. And I, uh, I can't remember, maybe my mind might be off, but I swear that I thought I saw you in an office at the headquarters in the roasting facility. Maybe you weren't there, but you were like, they were talking about this magazine. I had no idea you were there then. I didn't either, you know? <laughs> <laughs> it was such a small world. Yeah, but there yes. were a lot of a lot of people at that time that, that just kind of are still kind of trickling around the, the industry. So, um, yep. and I, I think, uh, uh, so in 2005, you were in Seattle, and and what? How did you start Barista Magazine? So, the in a nutshell, um, 
longtime mainstream journalist. I used to write about music and film. Um, found myself in coffee. Uh, I was the editor of Fresh Cup magazine. Oh, okay. RIP Fresh Cup really right. did a ton of stuff for this industry. I'm really sad right. to see them go. Right. Um, Absolutely. Then I we had this like wild idea because what I learned that one of the first things I learned about the coffee industry was that like people are nuts and they're all just like these creative dreamers and they just follow their I never, if I'd stayed in corporate newspapers, I never would have even considered opening my own business. But I'm like, if they can do it, I can do it. And so we had this idea and we were young and ready to take risks. And so uh, we decided that we definitely needed to have some like credibility with baristas. Um, I had a little from working at Fresh Cup, but I wanted to be like on the ground with them. So I took a job at, Fre at uh, Zoka doing marketing and then I ended up like helping with the competition training alongside Stephen Vick. Oh wait, wait. So wait, you were you worked at Zoka? <laughs> I didn't oh yeah. Even know that. Yeah, I worked at Zoka. I was just like, like I was just like a little barista person. Oh, like no, no. And that was it for me. That was all I, I did. Was, so I didn't know that. Wow. I was in the roastery and I mean I helped with the build out of the U Village Cafe and um Okay. And uh but you know you guys like, probably just, had lunch together at one time. Oh, I think that they delivered it. I think I had like a little package lunch while I was doing inventory in the back, you know, but yeah, no, I, I wish I <laughs> would have. That's wild. <laughs> yeah. So like this, the, the magazine, uh, this is your first one here, right? Uh, with uh, Bronwyn, is that right? Yes, who was also at Zoka at that time. Right, Is was that photo, do you know where that photo was taken? Yes, that photo was taken at Heinz Public Market. Okay. Yep. Another RIP. Um, and uh, Jeff Schaefer took that photo. Jeff Schaefer, I believe now works wow. for um, Caldi's. I'm not quite sure, but I know he's in the Midwest because that's where he and his wife are from. Oh. But um, I'll have yeah. to reach out. We'll have to reach out cover. to him. I should know it. But no, so I, I, I flipped to the very first page because I was trying to figure out like what was the very first paragraph you wrote for Barista Magazine and you know what was it about? And you were you were saying like this like this all began in Iceland or something like that. I don't know if you remember writing that, but I thought that that was kind of cool. I was just like, oh wow, this is Iceland or something like that. But um, well, back then, like, I mean, Europe and specifically Scandinavia was really leading the specialty coffee industry, and they were the ones really taking risks and investing in baristas, and they're the ones who started the barista competitions in the first place. So. Um, so yeah, I mean, that's where it was happening. So when we had the idea, yeah. I went to the Nordic Barista Cup in Iceland and presented them with like the crappiest little media kit you've ever seen that I made at Kinko's <laughs> the night before. And um, they, they're like, yeah, let's it. have a magazine about baristas because it'll empower them and make them see that they're, this is absolutely a career and this is super legit. And so and, we went and, from there. And there was this Norwegian fellow who was a contributor or something, or <laughs> what was his name? Oh my gosh. Uh, he owns a shop. Um, Tim Wendell, though. There's so many that. Tims. I, I, I know. don't know which one you're talking I don't about. Know. Well, so, okay, here you go, Marty, uh, Sarah. Uh -oh. now, what year was this, what year was this published? Me. Well, maybe. Can I read a little bit of this? I think it's just kind of mm -hmm. fun. Over 250 million people are currently on Facebook. Can you believe that? And what had previously been a college trend has gone mainstream with its fastest growing demographic being adults 35 years and older. Chances are your customers are already on Facebook. So it's probably pre 2018, I'm thinking. And, and so are so are your friends and family members and they aren't uh, yet your customers. So when was this written? When do you think this was written? I'm gonna say 2012. Ooh. I'm going to go, I'm going to probably say a little bit, a little bit, 250, you got to Google this though. Like when did Facebook have 250 million people and how many, how many people that are on Facebook right now? Dietrich, do you know this? Do you want to, you want to, uh, you don't even know, there's like a up, billion, right? Up here. <laughs> All right. I can tell when it was published by the font. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> Give me, there, give are me current, there are currently 2.45 billion active Facebook users. <laughs> Okay, so this is back year. when there was 250 million people. So this was, do you want to take a guess what year this was? Any, all right. Sarah, this was, 
I don't even remember. <laughs> I think it was I like would I'd say, say 2009. I'd say 2006. Well, I would say that Dietrich probably is cheating there. <laughs> <laughs> no way. Did I actually get it? Yeah, 2009. <laughs> This was in this was in was the a, Heather Perry piece. magazine. That was the guess. There it is, 2009 in September, and then we've There's got Heather. I know. Look at that. Awesome. Okay, name that year. Okay. Uh oh. Uh, what is what's what's Songer's first name? <laughs> Do you know who Songer this is? Okay. At at the core of Songer's presentation was the usefulness of constantly challenging and developing the cupper's palette and creatively using such taste to keep cupping skills sharp. One of the tests described in this class was the well-known triangulation test where three cups of coffee were are tasted. Two cups are the same, one is different. The test is simplified, simply identifying the odd cup, which may sound simple if the coffees used in the test have extremely different flavor profiles for, for example, an Ethiopian coffee and a Sumatra coffee. So like, this might be a tough one. Maybe I made this like way too hard because it's so easy for me to just open up the magazine and be like, I'm going to take a picture of that. <laughs> and then which fiery event is this article recapping? Marty, right. Sarah? I don't have Ooh. a clue. I think Sarah's got to go, got just it. go directly to the source. Cup of Excellence, Sarah. Paul Songer. He's been one of the head judges of Cup, Cup of Excellence forever. And right got, now he's he's actually in Rwanda right now working on the next auction. Like you, he is you've got, he's you've got, the shit. You've got Paul right. But it, the fiery event was. Was it Roasters Guild? Yes, it was Roasters Guild. And it was the same year as uh, this guy. I don't know if you know this guy. Um, I think it was, it was is it uh, Marty? Do you know him? Isn't that a, he's got some Kansas City ties, doesn't he? Uh, yeah, he went to school in Lincoln too. Okay. <laughs> it was this year. It was this year, 2007, when, uh, uh, what was his name? James Hoffman? Is he still around? <laughs> talk about youtube yeah, right right yeah. exactly yeah okay so name that year here's another one. panama's number one coffee esmeralda the special set an online auction record when it sold for 21 dollars a pound on june 29th this came after esmeralda special mm -hmm. placed first in the best of panama all right i'll tell you what we've come a long ways because it's over 300 a pound now if, exactly um, so at, at this time 21 dollars was the most it was a record setting Here's another clue, maybe if this helps. Nope. Oh, maybe it is. Yeah, well, <laughs> it was in Iceland that we, we formally announced our intention to begin Barista Magazine. Um, oh, well, that should give Sarah a big clue. Yeah. Well, 2004. I mean, this is from the first issue, so it's 2005, right. but it was yep. 2004 that we announced. There it is. And now this year, what, what uh, name this year? Truly, the sky's the limit to what combos with coffee one can imagine. That, that's I can say that that is the current Take the magazine and, that's, that's on my desk right now. Yep. Dripped and draped in Omaha, Nebraska, a coffee shop and yep. fashion boutique founded in March by sisters. Uh, and then the timing wasn't ideal. It happened in March. So there you go. This is 2020. They're so badass. Have you been to that shop? No. That's why Briefs the Magazine <laughs> works. Because... I didn't know about this until I actually read about it. And I'm like, that's 60 miles from my yeah, house. That, so that I, article I makes me want to go. There it is, 2020, Breeze the Magazine, changed the font. I like the new logo, it's crazy, good, I like it. Oh, and uh, the actual uh, texture too. Thank you, I'm sorry. No, no problem. And Marty, have you ever yeah. felt Breeze the Magazine? Yeah, yeah it's, uh, I, I, I like um, that, in, in fact, Here's another copy. Got one on my desk. It's um texture. We talk yeah. about texture. I mean, we miss we miss so much texture when we're reading everything online and with screens and stuff. Can you guys hear me? Um, yes. Yep. Yep. You're okay. back. You're good. Okay. Sorry about that. We're um, just talking yeah. about uh, feeling the magazine. There's like a texture. There's like a grittiness to it, and I, I like the extra thickness to it. It really, yeah, I, really absolutely. Works. Coffee people likes like stuff they can glom onto and keep forever and texture is a is a memory Love sense it. hey so uh um this is a barista action figure I don't, have you ever seen this thing have you ever seen it so on the on the back of this page um when i moved to seattle um i had just gotten out of uh, the peace corps after a brief stint and uh, i did buy a vespa 
and I was in a, in a, in a, a, a small apartment in a basement. And uh, after reading this, I was like, wow, I'm very cliche here. <laughs> so, <laughs> but yeah, so uh, I think the, the, the question is sort of like um, for, for Marty, I guess, or, you know, like looking at the year 2020 now and, you know, how, how do you feel like both of you, like how have you seen the barista community grow from the challenges? I mean, I've just over from 2005 to 2020, like um, how has the community grown and changed? Marty, you, you, you were well, kind of like getting to talk about that I'll, a little bit. I'll, you know, you, you, that first article's got Bronwyn on there. I can remember the very, very first U.S. barista competition was in Kansas City. Um, and Bronwyn flew out and she trained and helped a lot of the baristas develop their, their skill sets and put things together because it was kind of an, it was new. It was, it was really new. Um, and uh, uh, I can, it, one little description of how we've, we've changed is I remember sitting through the judging calibration and I could be a little bit wrong on this. It's been a long time. I'm old. Um, but I remember it. One aspect of it was they were required to pull two ounce shots in exactly 28 seconds. That was the target. That was the goal. That was a com compensatory, that's a big word for me, um, requirement. That was what the ideal shot in everyone's mind was. Two ounces, 28 seconds. Um, the following year, that was still the target, but they said, eh, you can deviate from that, but you're going to have to tell the judges why you're deviating from that. By the third year, you really could do whatever you wanted to do um, because we had learned in those short years that that going by those numbers isn't right for every coffee. Now, bringing that forward, we've evolved in that same path up to 2020. Oh, my word. Um, talk about ratios and times and um it's you we could have 10 shows on just coffee extraction well i've got uh more questions here but um you know sarah i don't know if you've seen it like do you feel like any of the articles that are coming out or or, or the the news feeds that, that you're kind of seeing and for you know the next magazine or whatever how do you what does 2020 what look like for baristas? I mean, what, I mean, it's, it's been a crazy year. Uh, <laughs> I don't even know where to start. I mean, like, you know, how have you seen the barista community grow from the challenges of this year? Like what has come out of this so far and, and what do we see ahead of us? I mean, do you have any? I think, it's, I think it's still really hard to evaluate where we are right now because we're still wrapping our heads around it because we all were starting to learn how to live this entire life um, from a place of with zero direction. But I do think it's interesting looking at that barista action figure because like part of it is like, and she's a snotty barista and she'll be curt with you and don't mess with her and all this stuff. And baristas aren't like that anymore. Like customer service is number one. And so I feel like going into 2020 and the pandemic and everything that they have been faced with, they could not have been better prepared because of all of the influences of the last few years. Oh my gosh. Good answer. Um, before we get into that, I kind of stepped on Sarah's answer on what the industry has done in the last 30 years. Um, you've got a beautiful viewpoint um, from where you're at. Um, is there any highlights that you could share with us from, from your stepping onto this merry-go-round to, to now? Um, well, in your answer, Marty, I felt like like there are two answers. There's the competition answer, and then there's the sure. daily retail service answer. And, and, and we've seen drastic changes in both, but they don't necessarily reflect one another. So when you talk about doing, you know, you're pulling your shots within 28 seconds, I remember those days. Yeah. And I feel like the rules have gotten more and more strict to the point that baristas are really punching through and figuring out ways that they're going to do stuff entirely different. Like Dietrich was saying, you know, next thing we know, we're going to have a competitor bring out wild animals for the judges to pet. And <laughs> I am on board. Hey. But, um, I'm a fan. <laughs> but I think one of the biggest uh, 
I mean, the equipment developments over the last years, the way that equipment manufacturers listen to baristas, like La Marzocco answering with the KB90 and um, I mean, that's revolutionary. And Kent Bakke had been yeah. thinking about that for 20 years. Um, listening to baristas, uh, baristas taking their roles seriously and so not trying, not, it's all about humility in so many ways. So the baristas are respectful of everyone around them. Those people are in turn respectful. I feel like there is a lot more synergy than there used to be, and it works for the better of the community. That's awesome. That's awesome. I I feel the same way. I mean, it's it's a it's a family, and uh, once you are into it and it's in your blood, um, you strive to get to know the barista, not just across town but around the country. Um, the internet has provided a lot of avenues for that. Uh, your magazine yeah. does a huge, huge favor to um, spreading the word and what's out there. Um, you know, you highlight different cafes, you highlight different roasters, you highlight individual um, baristas. Um, yeah. Um, well, I would, I'd like to say also that, you know, like uh, this year has been kind of challenging for the Specialty Coffee Association's uh, United Ooh. States chapter. And uh, we, we, are, we are trying very hard with, with structuring and, and also recruiting volunteers. We have elections uh, soon to be coming up, but I think that you know, we have Zoom calls, uh, or I'm sorry, yeah, Slack meetings almost every week or every other week. And, and we talk about you know, what's next, what's next, how are we gonna, but you know, the, the regular engagement online on these Slack channels are, are a, a great way to continue to be connected with uh, this growing uh, barista community. We are there. And we welcome everyone and we want people to find uh, the US chapter. We want to help it grow. Um, uh, prior to that, it's, it's, it's kind of like a little hard to kind of really dive into that right now. But the Specialty Coffee Association of America has, has uh, no longer exists. It's now the Specialty Coffee Association. And we now have a US chapter. Um, so yeah, there's a lot more to come there. But there is a community that is growing. And I've met a lot of great people that I had not met before or had not even knowing anything about like GoFundBean is another an, another great uh, connection. Um, Marcus Boney is is the um, the national coordinator. We've got a, a lot of great community coordinators, um, and so part of the whole reason we're doing this Coffee Tech Talk Tuesday was they said, "Well, John, what are you going to do?" I mean, what's you? <laughs> like, I'm just like, I don't know. I'm kind of like stuck in Nebraska. And I'm supposed to like take care of like Michigan and Minnesota. And it's like I was thinking like very like a typical geographic you know you know geographical bound location so it, once you're online it doesn't matter where you are it's what you do with your time and, and how you communicate and what you're trying to get across and and i think that like we're really learning a lot about how to uh uh bite the bullet and and, and uh, get on social media which i don't really particularly like but i'm here and i love seeing all of your faces Honestly, and it's pretty cool that we get to well, do this. We're learning. We're yeah. learning what to do and what not to do. Yeah, how to, how to, how to Twitter and uh, how to Facebook and stuff. Yeah, uh, all that stuff. <laughs> Sorry. But hey, we've got, we got something better. We've got a little pop quiz. Um, and this pop quiz is one of those benefits and those features in a magazine, but I don't have any answers. I actually made a wrong answer. So I, because I didn't want to like re reveal, because you know, I know they in Barista Magazine, they have this pop quiz on, uh, later on the in the magazine somewhere, um, and so I added my own answer. Um, so you could figure out which one I, I I added to this. So what is more important? Tamping pressure, tamping consistency. I don't have a tamper. I have Swift or a per uh, a puck press. Sorry. So which one? Which one did I add? No, I'm just kidding. Anyone want to go? Go, go, Sarah. Should we even talk about it? Uh, how about answer? all together? The last one. one. The last one, right. I don't have a tamper. That's, yeah, that I don't was even my- I understand the sentence. <laughs> <laughs> well, if that, if that last one wasn't there, we'd all agree that consistency is the important thing. Is it though? Yeah, it is. But, but <laughs> then that's also like tamping pressure. That could be one shot, but tamping consistency, you're talking about all day. That's true. I have issues oh. with this quiz already. Yeah, I, I, I Oh, you I, just wait for I'm, this one. I'm going to side with Sarah on this. <laughs> to get proper compression while tamping, wiggle the tamper back and forth. Push as firmly as possible and spin to polish. Tamp as quickly as possible in one punchy motion. 
press down in one smooth motion and release. Did you gently. write these? No, actually, Barista Magazine <laughs> did. <laughs> press down, knock the side of the porta filter with your tamper to loosen up the puck. Tamp down again, and then knock the compression up again by hitting your tamper on the side of the porta filter, and then tamp again. Repeat this process while conversing with the customer until the customer is concerned about the time you're spending making their drink and also writing this question. <laughs> Which one did I make up? All right. The last one. Yeah. Okay. This is it. This is my pop quiz. I'm sorry. All right. So that was it. Um, yeah. Okay. Who is this guy? Thank you. This guy. This guy. Marty? Can I this tell guy? you guys a real quick, quick <clears throat> little story about this guy and this cover? Yeah. Yes. Because when Michael Phillips won the WBC, we we don't want to have this. We only have six covers a year. We don't want to have the same person on the cover twice. We there are so many baristas to profile. So when Michael Phillips won the WBC, we we're like, okay, but this will probably be the only time. Then this happened. I mean, and then later Agnieszka happened. It's all good. We're very happy with it, but you get my drift. So with Pete, I was like, are you done competing? This is 2012. Yeah. After, after yeah. he got second place <clears throat> in 2011, and he's like, yeah, I'm done. Yes. I'm out. I'm not going to compete anymore. There's no chance I would win the WBC. Yeah. Yeah. And, and you mentioned something about his shirt. <clears throat> yeah. Does that what is that? Is it say, well, Alaska? It says Alaska. It says Alaska. Okay, it's I, Pete's but, sense but it, of humor. I but love it. it. Yeah, that's that's. I don't. Know. Yeah, we've probably got time. Quick, quick story about 2012, 2000, 2011, 2012, 2013 with Pete. <clears throat> 2011, um, he like, um, like we said, uh, he took second in the WBC. Um, and his performance was, he, he was working at Honolulu Coffee that year. And so he actually handpicked the beans, he processed the beans, he dried the beans. In other words, <clears throat> I'll, I'll make the story a little quicker. Nobody touched those beans but Pete until he handed that cup of coffee, that espresso, to the judges. It was, it was all Pete. And so he told that story. It was, it was all the processing. Took second place. I'm sure he was a little bit disappointed to go that far and, and be the bridesmaid. But took a year off. Somewhere in that process, I think Pete learned to respect and honor the people that normally do that. Yeah. Because in 2013, he came back and he didn't touch those beans until he was grinding them. But in his presentation, he talked about the grower. He talked about the person that picked the coffee. He talked about the people that were processing the coffee. All the way up through that chain, um, John Welch that roasted the coffee. Um, and then he put all that weight of all their work on his shoulders, presented that to the judges. He knew that it was his responsibility to pay homage and not hurt all that work that they did to bring this cup of coffee to them today. Hey, what, and what do what have, what have like these competitions look like? Should we like uh, show a clip of what <laughs> yeah, is tamping? Yeah, we've got a clip, let's. Uh, oh, yeah, we, uh, we've got a clip um, and I'm gonna try to show it. Dietrich, you can work your magic too, right? And are, are we, are, is our audio live right now? I'm gonna tell you that I'm dosing okay. 20 grams into the porta filters. Our I'm audio is live, so we can talk over this. 38 grams so into this, the cups. Okay. This is with so the, this is, this is with now, the Sarah, were you there? Bringing out the best balance of flavors no. that re represents. Right. This is 2013. It feels coffee. like 100 years ago. You get these shots and get tastes. Are now, but okay. still, like Pete I look at this and I'm like, giving just the judges even more information to go on there. I honestly can't remember if it was. Should that shoot that he had? Like to shoot underneath the grinder. That's porta filters. What he's holding. Okay, so immediate. Now they all start to pour 20 grams of coffee in there. Detail or if he's just, it does uh, come to light a little bit later on in the performance. Then were like first started leaving the two porta filters out and then doing the dual insert. And like right. that was revolutionary. There are so many instances of these things being done that were never done before, but then 
someone and who that, figured it out and it makes sense. Well, in that particular uh, presentation, there was a lot of things that he were he did the first time. The location of that grinder where it was at a 45 degree um, position between the uh, espresso machine and the judges allowed him to talk to the judges while he dosed his coffee. No one had done that before. Um, he used a 32 ounce steaming pitcher and steamed all of his milk for the four caps in one steam and then separated them. No one had done that before. They said it really couldn't be done and have good quality um, uh, milk. He did it. Um, so yeah, there's a lot of innovation um, mm -hmm. and not, not just Pete, but there's innovation every, every year, every competition. Um, I just love to see what the competitors do with what they're given. So on to your point, Marty, about how Pete managed to rearrange his table, even with the table stationary. Now the rules are that you can choose different table yeah. configurations. Sure. And, and then Agnieszka from Poland comes in and builds her own table on top of that table. And so it's just like the way that baristas are able to reimagine yeah yeah especially even within these very 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 structured rules it's it's always it's just unbelievable well very inspiring the, the something else that's inspiring about the competitions and the baristas is, is that's where the ultimate creativity is going on and there's a not a huge portion but there's there's Okay, maybe there is a huge portion. There's a lot of their innovation that ends up in drinks at the cafes. There's processes mm -hmm. that end up in the cafes. If you saw how Pete was tamping, um, look at how Bronwyn was training back in the early 2000s. Um, she was doing a, a 40 pounds, tap the side, tap the hell out of the side of it, tamp it again 40 pounds, but doing it in a really Elo eloquent, almost poetic visual manner, but still very complicated. Um, yeah. Where if you saw Pete's, it was, it was pretty concise, pretty simple, very fluid, um, very simple, totally different. And everything and is for efficiency. Like everything, every millisecond is planned and accounted for and there's something that's supposed to happen in that moment and so sure. to take a risk at that level is really terrifying you've put so much time not to mention money um mm -hmm. so but much those, of those techniques if you look around the cafes now there's a lot of people doing yeah. that type of technique that Pete did yeah in the cafes it's, today yeah and and you know I, i've uh it did a lot of judging and I, and I competed once, one and done and never again, because it was way too stressful. <laughs> but using that um, that um, score sheet and looking how it's organized and it, and everything is for a purpose and it's all about efficiency and quality and, and, and good customer service. It is, it's not just for fun. This is for making yourself better at what you do and, and you know, providing a better beverage. I mean, it, and, and an equality experience. So. I love using that as a as a training template for any new customer that comes in. Just just get out the score sheet and look, you know, just remind yourself like this is what we're this is what we're trying to do. We're trying to calibrate so yeah. we can we can come together as an industry, independent industry, and yeah. and understand that when you walk into another coffee shop that's an SCA member or you know a competitor, and you go over to this shop and they're also recognized for that, that you have a better likelihood of getting the same quality drink, and. Uh, and, and that's tough because sometimes you, 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 I could go into a coffee shop that I want to support, but the, I don't know what to expect. And sometimes it's, it's, a, it's a tough, you know, unexpected um, surprise that's good or bad. But uh, so that, I, I think that these barista competitions really do. I know a lot of people think it's, it's, it's just for fun, or, but, but it really does help the industry. You I think bring it's up a good point. Do you agree, Sarah, that, that if, if you're going to a, a non-affiliated cafe, but it might be a nice adventure. It might be it might be a really nice experience. Um, but if you go to someone that's involved with with the SCA or involved with in the industry, um, that you have a a little better idea before you ever walk in what some of their consistencies are. I think so, and I think that that is fairly new in the last few years since social media got like so crazy. I mean, it's existed and been around for a while but since it became like 
that was such a funny little quote that you showed, John, that was like, <laughs> maybe your customers are on it. Of course, like everybody either has been on it and just decided not to be on it or they're right. still on it or whatever. Yeah. But um, now I feel like you would, you're kind of lazy not to know that this stuff just exists. I mean, you don't have to engage with it, but like just to know what you're working within uh -huh. And uh, I don't know, but cafes have different, you know, philosophies. Like some people like to have completely green baristas come in so that they don't bring any of their old habits or bad habits or whatever in. And some yeah. want people to come in who already know what they're doing. And so, I mean, that's, that's really specific. I like, I like the green baristas. I, I love not having to break any bad habits down. I mean, Oh, and I see the, the tamper being hit on the side. I mean, that, maybe that's good. I don't know, but it doesn't seem to work for what I do. But um, it's 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 a lot easier to work with someone who's like, well, that's not how we did it at uh, X, you know, place or whatever. Mm -hmm. But if it's if they're coming from a you know past barista competitor, it's a little bit. I usually get things like these, like this the distributor uh, tool that goes you know on you know rather than using your finger. I didn't know about that until someone who had been in the industry kind of told me like, this is great. I love this. So it, it yeah. really pays off to, to read those Sasha. magazines, right? Well, and that was, I mean, but again, that's something that came out of the WBC, Sasha Sestic, mm -hmm. yeah. WBC champ in 2015 from Australia. He came up with that. And now oh, hey. there are a few different kinds, but. Oh my yeah. gosh, we have 10 minutes and I have like uh, 3,000 questions. Okay, <laughs> like, I'll be quiet. This, no, 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 this is where you gotta like start talking. <laughs> like, okay, oh, no, this, no. Is speed round. All this, this is my speed round, this is my speed round. Uh, what's your most frequently asked question uh, in life, I suppose? I don't care what it is, it'd be Barista Magazine or just whatever. You can either be the uh, one who's asking it or you, the one who's receiving the question. <laughs> how, do you, how do you get the texture on your cover, honestly? Really? Are really? you serious? It wasn't just me. And, and you probably say like, it's an extra 50 cents or something like that. I don't know. Um, it's so, a, <laughs> what, no, what I always say is you can use it as a loofah. I like it. Yeah, I think it, I think it would last. I think it's But good. honestly, it, that's the most often asked question. Ooh, how do you do I this? Like that. Anyway, continue. Well, so um, how, I'm gonna skip the next one because I wanna come back to it, but how many actual magazines have you printed in total? Oh my gosh. <laughs> I'm just thinking like every know. every SCA convention, I see like a pile of Barista magazines and I'm thinking like, well, there must have been a couple hundred thousand million, maybe not a million. I don't know, maybe a million. I don't know. I don't, I don't know. And I'm, I'm, I'm not asking you super person. hard questions here, but how many, how many do you think in a, in a month or a year do you, do you, have you, have you delivered out there? Like when you push well, out a new magazine, how many, yeah. In, tr in times when we have shows and conferences, it's right. usually like, 30,000 um, per, uh, oh, wow. but okay. now, but now actually our subscriber numbers are higher than they've ever been since COVID. I don't know if people are just like looking at us as. Well, I think what happened was, whatever. well, what happened was they were going to subscribe to our YouTube channel, but they got confused when they subscribed <laughs> to Bruce <Prism laughs> Magazine. I mean, you know, we, we talked maybe about this it. before, but uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> maybe. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, anyway, so like, what type of advertisement opportunities do you offer? I know like if I would call up a magazine and want to know like, do, is that the just in print online or is that a bad question or something kind of boring? Or? No, no, um, <laughs> we have ads in the magazine and on the line, but I do want to say that I really, really love working with like grassroots groups and nonprofits and stuff. And we, we, I just, I encourage people to talk to me and see what kind of complimentary ads we have available for nonprofits and those kinds of groups. Like I am so proud to have food for farmers and grounds for health in our pages and please reach out to me. It is not as hard as you think it might be. Everything is flexible and on a sliding scale. Yeah, it was really easy for me. Marty was like, hey, I'm gonna call Sarah. I'm like, oh, great, do that. <laughs> No, no, it's not that bad. I think we're it, all like, just even, people with phones. Like we're all just. Or you go online and yeah. go to Brisa Magazine, and I think there's an editor, and you can just uh, email you. I think. Well, I just yeah. knew any event that we ever had, and we contacted Sarah, or she knew that she was coming out. We had an opportunity to talk to her ahead of time. She always said, "Hey, can I send you some magazines? How many do you want? Do you need a write-up on it? Should we do an article? You know, it's." she's she's over the years she has just been one of the best people 
within the industry I've ever met. Well, I've got that a fun really one. kind thing for you to say, Marty, and I can say it right back to you. Oh. But that's why Barista Magazine exists is to serve the community. So if I'm not doing that stuff, then I'm not doing my okay. job. Well, you do a great job. Well, do you have, um, so what has been your most memorable coffee event experience? Do you have one you want to talk about? Something that comes to mind? <gasps> You've only been to a couple, I know, but. <laughs> wow. I don't know. I'll say one that has to do with this group, which is one thing that I loved so much was um, uh, at the, it was a qualifier event a few years ago and it was in Kansas City and, um, and Marty and, uh, I don't know who organized it, the whole community organized it, but they asked that, like they told sponsors, we're not gonna recognize, we're not gonna like give someone platinum billing or gold billing or whatever. It's just like everybody's coming together to do it. And there is no other community besides Kansas City that I know of in the US still, and I hope there will be soon, that does that, that people come together and really work on behalf of the entire community. Um, I have lots of weird and wild, crazy stories, but the ones that are about the way that people in the community come together and support one another, just. There's a lot going on in Kansas City right now. Marty, what's. Uh, has, has been for years. Yeah, and, and right, it's Christopher or Kate, or I, I, know, I keep on seeing something like they're doing some things, some really cool things down there. We got to get them on the show sometime. Yeah, we'll get them on the show. Um, yeah. Part of, part of what they're they're doing is is kind of a, a barista support thing, um, right? Um, trying to monetize some things and um, come up with some supplies and and things to sell and and stuff like that. All all in support of the baristas. And so yeah, let's get them on. We can help them out. Have you seen his roaster that he redid? I have. The well, beautiful man. It, wow. It's a gorgeous roaster. It, yeah, it is. And it, it broke, and I had to go over there and help him out a little bit. Awesome. Um, well, good. Did you fix it? Um, he, did you help? He actually, you got there? He, he actually did, he did the it. fixing, um, did. but I, 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 I steered him down a path, and as nice. luck would have it, 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 it worked out. Hi, Christopher. Oh, I don't know. Hopefully you watch it. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Kate. Hi, everybody else in Kansas City. Miss y'all. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so do you have any exclusive news to share? We could skip it if you don't have anything exclusive, or if you have news. Well, our December January issue is coming out on December first, which is what Tuesday. Uh, yeah. I will give you I will give you a little tidbit that's kind of exciting that I'm excited about. All right. I'm not going to tell you who's on the cover, but I will tell you that hmm. Mr. Lem Butler wrote the article. Uh -huh. Ah, well, wow, he did something really cool this year. On my birthday, there was his birthday cupping. And I got a cupping spoon on my my birthday, uh, not on purpose. <laughs> Just, but it was really cool. And he and 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 they had that competition. I think they gave out some like a sleigh or something. I oh, know. I thought maybe he was giving oh, yeah, cupping spoons that. out. Yeah, so cool. everybody's birthday. I'm like, where's mine? <laughs> nope. Um, I got. We're at. Yeah. So like. We've got some parting words, but do you want to do some comments? Mar uh, Dietrich, do you got any comments? From yeah, the, sure. From I'll, the I'll chime in. Tootie Rowe says, hi, Sarah. Hi, Tootie. <laughs> Holly Baskin Love was Tootie. checking in saying hi. Laura Clark. Uh, hey, Madeline hey, Garcia. Hey, Madeline. She was, she was mentioning that she liked Pete's Alaska Hawaii shirt, uh, and she's <laughs> got to ask him where to find that. Um, I, I hope I'm pronouncing this correctly. G Jeline Torres? And then uh, she said oh, yeah. hi. And then uh, Kate Blackman had uh, more of an observation, and I think you guys can kind of play off her observation. But trainers with access to competitions and events are probably the most responsible, or are probably those most responsible for technique proliferating. Oh, good point. That really is good a good point. point. And that, <laughs> that's something that, that on Pete's competition, um, I flew back from Boston with him when he won the national and knowing he's, he's got to go to the WBC. Um, and, uh, he, he seemed to be a little detached, um, on the flight. And I said, what's up? And he said, I've got to figure out how to get Holly over to the WBC because Holly is what his coach is his coach, um, teamed up. And so she's, she's definitely a top notch barista, 
from beginner to world barista trainer. I mean, she she does the, that whole gamut. Um, but it takes so. like a, a whole different kind of person to be a really great coach. And I don't think there's ever been a, a coffee competition winner. I hope I'm right about this who has not acknowledged the fact that like, it is not them just by themselves. There is an army of people behind them and they acknowledge that Kate, for example, helped Kaylee, like Kaylee Gann would say in a heartbeat that she never would have won the US Brewers Cup if it weren't for Kate helping her and, and working with her tirelessly. And it's always a community that comes back to people. And it's not even just like the coaches or the roasters or the farmers, all that, but it's also like the other people who are like there to like taste your shots when you can't, you you know, and just like, yeah, and just help out and be an extra hand. Yeah. (laughs) Talk to you when you go, I can't do this anymore. I, I, you know, give you a little shot of whiskey and uh, rub your feet. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, it's just about eight o'clock and I, I've got uh, some parting words, I guess, that I I read from the, your first magazine and it's oh from God. your editorial. And <laughs> this paragraph wraps it up. Look and I'm like, there. this is a mission oh. statement. This is a beautiful photograph and a beautiful statement that I got to say, like you have lived true and to your soul and to your commitment to this. So let me just read it. But it is because of the barista, it is because of your passion and drive and motivation and thirst for knowledge that we know We'll never run out of topics to explore. We encourage your dialogue and ideas, your arguments and debates. We hope you will come to see this magazine as an educational resource, a place to find news of competition results and barista activity, a forum for learning about one another in an effort to more cohesively fuse together our far-reaching community. I approach my work here with the end goal of promoting the craft of the professional barista as a means to ensure a sustainable future for the larger specialty coffee industry and my God, you've done it really well. Fifteen years, and and you're just not you just got started, but yeah, I would say thank you That's so much awesome. for what you do. And keep I'm it going. not crying, you're crying. Yeah. Can I just I'm say one thing? Crying. It's that I I honestly feel like we're all in this for this end goal of making as cheesy as it sounds, making the world a better place. Because the more the those of us on this call. Um, and all the people in consuming countries, the more we do, the more we are helping people in developing countries. And that is where this is the most important. And I think that so. we are just getting started there too. And like, and you made a great point of, you know, like places in Honduras, Nicaragua, Guatemala, Peru. I, you know, I've, I've had the privilege and the opportunity to travel around the world and see yeah. a barista community growing, but not necessarily with the attention that the barista community has within the United States or even with Europe. So there's a lot more to come. And there are some amazing baristas out there that are that are really, you know, like starting to infuse my world. And I, I, I want more of it. And uh, I see that through Barista Magazine from day one, you're talking about Iceland and you haven't stopped. So it's a global magazine, global community. Um, so thank you so much. Marty, do thank you have you. any, oh, and thank you for matching our, our, our goal to try to like raise a thousand dollars for GoFundMe and they'll be here next week. So, Yay. Yeah. Let's leave on that like really happy note. <laughs> thank you so much. All right. Anything else, Marty? Oh, just thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Sir. How can we get a hold of you, uh, Marty? And then, and then, um, actually how you can get a hold of me real quick. Uh, Coffee Tech Talk Tuesday. I'm always here. Uh, you can email me at coffeetechcentral at gmail.com or call me uh, 402-817-9991. Amazingly, no one's called me yet. That's, that's IG fine. handles, you guys. What is IG? Oh, Instagram, uh, at Coffee Tech Tuesday. Yep. Marty, most, most of mine on the IG is uh, centered around me personally. So it's Mr. Marty Rowe at gmail.com. Um, uh, uh, again, 2021 for Workbench Coffee Labs is the uh, the year of education. Um, we'll be launching our our mini mini classes. I'm really excited about that. I've been working pretty hard on content. Uh, we're getting some stuff together, so we'll shoot out some teasers. Probably have a beta class or some or so late in December um, to see how things are going, see how things are testing. Um, but workbenchcoffeelabs.com um, is a place to reach out and look and see what's what's shaping up. Uh, if you have to get a hold of us, 816-529-603, um, you'll get a hold of a, a real person and uh, and uh, 
Yeah, teach me about Ohm's law. Teach me about Ohm's law, please. We're that's that's one of the first classes that we're going to do. Um, It's more than a triangle, right? It it is absolutely more than a triangle. (laughs) But we, my goal, and this is this is something that I I've I have striven, if that's the correct. It can be. Go with it. Um, you could you could strive you could strive and you can strive and uh, try try to do is I because I have to break it down to sim- simple basic statements for me to understand it and I kind of expect other people so that's what we try to do is these complicated things we we really truly try to break it down so that you don't you're not parts changing you understand what's going on you have the basics so I can't wait to so that, start that's us. Let's so, do that in January. All right, I've talked enough. Going. Sarah, how do we get a hold of you? What 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 can we do to I am not gonna answer the phone. So I'm not even gonna <laughs> give you my phone number. I hate the phone. I mean you can call and, and if you really want to talk on the phone, we can talk on the phone. But I'm always easiest to reach it uh at Barista Magazine on Instagram, but then also a little secret of Barista Magazine's email is that, like, basically, if you write anything, like, I think Marty Rowe is the sexiest man alive at baristamagazine.com, I will get that email. Oh, that is so cool. I'm going to send that. (laughs) You're going to get that email. Or you can send it to info at or Sarah at. It's getting hot in here. I will get all of them. <laughs> we love you, Sarah. I love thank you guys Thank you so too. much. All right, yeah, well. Thank you. Have a good one, everybody. Thank you for joining the show. Remember, GoFundMe, uh, GoFundBean.org. Subscribe. We'll be here. Oh, yeah, and please subscribe to Coffee Tech Talk Tuesday so uh, Breeze Magazine on can YouTube. match our funds. YouTube. And go subscribe to <laughs> Breeze Magazine also. It's just two buttons. It's like one over here and then... Go to get Barista Magazine. It's pretty awesome. I've got a stack of them. I'm never going to get rid of them. It's crazy. They're great. All right. They're great. Yeah. Love it. Thank you so much. All right. All have right, a good night, thanks, everybody. Guys. Bye. You too. Bye. Thanks again for joining us for another episode of Coffee Tech Talk Tuesdays with John and Marty. If you enjoyed the show with Sarah, make sure you like the video before we uh, finish up the stream here. You can always come back and watch it later if, let's say, you missed the first part or you missed the last part. Come swing back. Watch it later. Check it out whenever you want. Um, Again, uh, as John mentioned, uh, every subscriber that we uh, gain over the next month or so is going to directly correlate to a $1 donation to GoFundMe to help out the business in the trying times right now. So, again, don't forget to subscribe. Tell your friends to subscribe, and we're going to have a cool show next week. So we'll see you then. Thanks. Thanks.